Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 68 with me Craig Barton. Now as you've probably heard me mention in this series of Resource of the Weeks, I've got an absolutely wonderful Year 11 class this year and they'll be doing their GCSEs in June and I'm hoping to get plenty of A's and A stars out of them. And seeing as we're reaching that kind of revision time of the year, I'm asking them for requests for topics that they want me to go over. And one that keeps coming up is 3D trigonometry. And it's something I can sympathise with because, again, as I've mentioned many a time over the last few years, my spatial awareness is absolutely useless. And once you add that extra third dimension um, into the mix, I really, really struggle. So I'm always on the hunt for resources that would help me understand uh, and get to grips with those spatial concepts. However, one thing that my year 11s also struggle with, and yet, yet they're reluctant to admit this, is they often write down absolute rubbish for answers for numerous topics that couldn't possibly write, be right in a million years. So we get things like, oh, a car uh, weighs 4.5 kilograms, or sometimes we even get flipping probabilities that are bigger than one and all sorts. So I want to, I'm also on the lookout for resources that get them to reflect on their answers a bit better. So imagine my delight when I came across this. Get 21 3D trigonometry, because not only does it help students get better at 3D trig, it also gets them thinking about the, how sensible their answers are in a really fun and engaging way. So let's take a look at it. Uh, there's loads of question cards, and what there also is, um, is a set of instructions, because you might never have played uh, this, this game before. So as it says here, the idea behind this activity is for students to reflect upon the appropriateness of our final answers by assessing a question first. And there's instructions for how the students play the game here. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just talk you through this because I've run this uh, with my uh, year 12s just as a little tester. So there are eight question cards. I've just printed off the uh, one to two set here. And it's your, tra uh, your traditional, excuse me, uh, tricky 3D trigonometry style questions. The ones that you'd imagine appearing on kind of question 19 and onwards on the GCSE calculator paper. So you've got the classic rectangular prism here where you've got to work out that, that angle. And then you've got the tra uh, classic square brace pyramid here where you've got to work out the, uh, the length of X, which is uh, one of the bases of, of the square. So uh, again, nothing uh, out of the ordinary here, really nice questions for the kids to do. But here's a twist. So you uh, give the kids out one of these questions and you give them four minutes to work out the answer and they either do their answer in the book or, or work in, working out down there. And when they've got their answer, you ask them to round it to the uh, nearest whole number, I think it is, or one significant figure. So a bit of practice of rounding as well. But then you say, right, here are all the other seven questions that you haven't answered yet. I'm gonna give you a minute to choose which one you want to answer. And the idea is that you want your final answer for that question, plus your final answer to the first question that you've answered, to be as close to 21 as you can get. Now that's really, really nice, because say for example, uh, they answered uh, question card one, and they got an answer of, I don't know, 14 or 14.1 then they need to quickly scan across the other seven questions to see if they can find one where they reckon the answer is going to be about six or seven. Now that's really, really important because it practices their rounding and estimation skills. And it also gives them a sense of whether they've got any idea of what kind of answer they're expecting. Can they work without a calculator? Do they know if they uh, do the sign of 30 that it's going to essentially halve anything they multiply it by? Um, are they good at sensing whether if an angle's bigger than 45 degrees, whether the height's going to be taller than the base or not? So it gives them a really good insight and a really good test of their own understanding of whether they can judge the size of answers. And then, of course, give them another four minutes to work out the actual answer to question two or, or the second card or uh, whatever it is. Add their answers together and we've got a bit of a competition to see who's got the closest to 21. And what's absolutely lovely about this, and you know I, 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 this is always a winner for me, is that there's uh, complete worked answers given as well. So you don't even need to work them out yourself as a teacher. You can project these on the board and even give these to the students as little revision cards. So absolutely wonderful. You've got eight really well thought out uh, 3D trigonometry cards testing all the possible things that could come up at GCSE. But you've got it in a really interesting, engaging way because you're challenging students to make predictions about answers and they've got an incentive to do so because that allows them to select the, the question that they're going to answer second and gives them that opportunity to reflect back on the accuracy of the answers, giving some really, really, really good opportunities for discussion in the classroom. What a wonderful resource. I cannot wait to try it out on my year 11s. And if you use it, please feed back on this, on this page, how it went, or even just to pass on your thanks to H. Spedding for an excellent resource. 
and I shall return with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves and bye for now.